What's up, YouTube? Back with another update on 50 Shades of Chevy, my 85 C30. And we're doing a switch suspension 6.8 drop on. Uh, just a quick update video. We're not done with it yet, but we're getting really close. So here's the truck as it sits. We've got it back down on the ground. It's been a couple weeks since my last video. So we got the rear end in, airbags, flip kit, mini notch, cross member. Everything's going pretty well. Uh, we just got it back down on the ground tonight and did a few things. You can see my exhaust isn't done. I had to move my mufflers forward um, to clear the leaf springs right here because my side pipes come out underneath the leaf springs and they were making contact. So we had to move them. But flip kit's in. It's a switch suspension flip kit. It's got these cool deals that go underneath the leaf springs, or on top of the leaf springs, but underneath the original leaf spring hangers. And they're a certain height on each side to angle the pinion just right because they're designed for these trucks. So it gives it uh, just a little bend because you want a degree or two in your drive shaft angle. So really happy with that. Uh, I did box in <clears throat> the back sides of the notches just to fully box in the frame rails just for extra strength. Uh, I cut my shock tabs off because I need to make longer shock mounts to run my factory length shocks. I could buy lowering shocks, but I didn't really want to spend the money. And I have a buddy with a plasma table, so he's going to cut me some quick pieces of metal. But everything's coming together really good. I like the uh, helper airbags back here. Everybody keeps asking me, this truck is not on airbags. It only has helper bags. We did remove one spring out of the leaf pack, and that was the overload spring, which will be your three-quarter inch thick leaf spring on the bottom of your leaf pack. Uh, and that's just for super heavy loads, and if you remove it, it'll give it a little bit softer ride. Uh, just know that your leaf springs will droop farther than stock. That's why we run into the problem with uh, the leaf springs hitting the exhaust pipes. But other than that, it's looking really good. I did build a hidden hitch because my other hitch uh, was going to be too low and I knew I was going to drag it on a bunch of stuff. So I just decided to cut everything off and built a hidden hitch. I got just a blank hitch from Amazon for like 20 bucks or something like that and welded some two by two in there. I'm probably gonna add a few things onto that uh, just to over strengthen it. It never hurts. And then this is from a Buick Roadmaster. Just a flip up piece and then there you have your hidden hitch with enough room to slide your hand in and actually be able to pin a hitch into it. And I'm gonna clean all this stuff up, so. Cut the mud flaps down. That was interesting. Tires are on. So everything's shaping up to be pretty good. The front has already been lowered. So next step is I do want to put onboard air on this truck. So I have an air tank that's going to go back here. Uh, I'll make all my own cross members and everything. And then I'm going to use a Firestone uh, air compressor because... I'm too cheap to buy a brand new Viair. So that'll do just fine. The only thing I'm going to run off of the air tank in the back will be train horns in the front and then an air controller to the cab for the helper bags. I'm not going to do any full air ride right now. And then I'll obviously have a quick connect in case I want to air up tires or blow the dust out of the inside of the cab or what have you and then once i get my uh air tank mounted and the air compressor mounted back here then we'll be able to put this giant bed on and uh be able to pull it out in the sunlight and see what it looks like and 
I'll be happy. But as of right now, it looks really good. It's nice and low, just the way I wanted it. So this ended up being, I thought this was originally going to be a 5.7 drop. Uh, it turns out it was a little bit more than that. Seems how I did three inch spindles and took one coil out of the front that ended up being about six inches and then just this flip kit alone the axle being a four inch tube uh, once you flip that up and add the uh, flip kit and everything it ends up being about eight inches so nothing too crazy this truck still has plenty of Plenty of room underneath the header collectors and the cross members and the gas tanks and all that stuff. So, pretty happy. The other thing is that if you can see, the rear end is pretty low or pretty high up in the frame. You have to remember that this right here, your frame, your bed is only going to sit one inch above this part of the frame where it comes up right there if you notice your bed has tall cross members and short cross members these short cross members are right there where they're going to sit right on the frame rails so as of right now with the rear end where it's at if the rear end comes up one inch higher than the frame rails you're looking at three, from this position, you're looking at three inches of up travel, which on a one ton truck is quite a bit. If you were running that with no air in the airbags, it probably would smash into the bottom of the bed, but you're not supposed to run airbags completely empty. So at five or 10 pounds, it will probably have enough. You'd probably have to hit something really hard, speed bump at 30 miles an hour or something to actually get that rear end to hit the bed. So I'm not exactly worried about that. Once again, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, I hope you're learning a little bit. Uh, I am definitely learning a lot. Uh, if you have any questions, drop them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, I'm going to put links for all the suspension parts and whatnot, switch suspension, and uh, all the stuff from Rock Auto uh, if you want to check that out too. So until next time, peace.